Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Ventura 13.3. It's now available to the public and is available at the same time everywhere around the world for everyone on a macOS Ventura supported device. Now this came in at a very large 11.76 gigabytes for me. This is on a 16 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Max processor. This particular update was released alongside many other updates such as iOS 16.4 and others. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So if we click on the Apple in the upper left, go to about this Mac, and then we click on Ventura 13.3, you can see the build number is 22E252. This is the same build as the release candidate. So you won't have an update if you're already on the beta and you're a developer or a beta tester, you won't see an update here. Now let's go ahead and close this out and talk about what's new. Now the first thing has to do with messages. So let's go into messages and within messages, we have 21 new emoji to comply with the latest Unicode standard. We have a shaking face, a pink heart, a blue heart, a moose, a jellyfish, a blackbird and others as well, along with palms facing up. And you can of course change the skin color on this as well. So that's new in messages. And we also have some updates to the keyboard and within the keyboard, what we have is transliteration support for Gujarati, Punjabi, and Urdu keyboards. We also have new keyboard layouts for Choctaw, Chickasaw, Akan, Hasa, and Yoruba. So hopefully I'm saying those properly, but those are all available now with this update. Now, if you have a MacBook with Apple Silicon with an SD card slot, SD or SD extended capacity cards now require user approval before the card can communicate throughout Mac OS. This is a great security update. It's already available for USB accessories and now it's available for the SD card. So it's just an extra level of security there so we can allow it and then it will work. Within the Freeform app, they've updated this so you can now remove the image from its background, similar to what we have with Apple Photos. So if we click on the image, click the little image button, and then you'll see we have the option to remove the background and it isolates the Apple Watch Ultra that I have here. Then you can resize it to fit within the Freeform app. So this is great. It's a nice quick way to remove a background using AI. And within photos, there's an update as well. If we go to photos and then click on duplicates, duplicates will now be scanned across shared photo libraries as well. This is great that it can detect them not only on your Mac, but also across those shared photo libraries on your iPhone and iPad with family members. You can then click on them and then merge them and it will merge across the different devices as well. If we go into settings and then we go to Siri and spotlight under Siri and spotlight, if we go to our language here and change this maybe to Hebrew. We have two new Siri voices for this. So let me click select and then you can hear these. Hi, Ani Siri. Tivharu et akol sheli. Here's voice two. Hi, Ani Siri. Tivharu et akol sheli. If we click done, again, if we switch this to Arabic, under Arabic, we have two new voices as well. Marhaban, Ana Siri. Arraja uhtiyaru sauti murad istikhdamu. So it's nice that they've added those updated Siri voices for both of those languages. And then of course you can switch it to whatever you'd like, but those are available depending on your language. Within accessibility, there's some updates as well. If we go to display under display, we have a new option for dim flashing lights. This says video content that depicts repeated flashing or strobing lights will be automatically dimmed just like we have on iPhone and iPad now with the latest updates. So it's great that they've added this. They've also added the update for voiceover. If you use voiceover, they've added the ability for it to read weather app information and maps. So those have been updated. If you're using voiceover should be available now, once you install this update. Let's go ahead and close this out. And we also have some shortcut updates. So if we go into shortcuts, let's find that. And within shortcuts, we have 12 new actions. Now I talked about this with iOS 16.4 and they carry across, but some may not be relevant to Mac. So we have shut down for an action, auto answer calls, set silence, unknown callers, set always on display, lock screen, intercom, set announce notifications, set night shift, set VPN, set true tone and set stage manager. So those are all new. Again, they carry across your devices if you're using iCloud and you also have the new option to option click or right click on any one of these actions here. And then we can change the icon. So here it only allows you to change the color of the icon 
for some reason, but the actual icon itself, you can change on iOS. And I showed that in a different video. So you can change the icon itself. It looks like maybe they've left that out here, but if we click on change icon, you actually have that option within the iOS app, but here it does not appear to be as easy to just change the icon here. So that's something that you'll have to change on iOS first. If we go into the home app, we get an update there as well. If we click on the three dots in the upper right, and then we go to home settings under home settings. If we go to software update, under software update, we now have home upgrade available. This is the new home architecture update that we had before they removed and now they've brought back. Now you can update your different devices, but they will need to be updated with the latest version of iOS or HomePod OS. So you'll want to make sure they're updated like that. Then you can come back and then upgrade them. You can do this from your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. You also have the option to now manually or automatically update different devices that are using matter. So that's a small update, but if you have a matter supported device, I currently don't have one. You'll now have that option. Now, Apple has resolved a bunch of bugs in this update as well, a few really. And the first one has to do with trackpad. So under trackpad with the trackpad, they've fixed an issue where gestures may occasionally stop responding. I experienced this myself with pinch to zoom and that should be resolved now. Also, they've resolved an issue where if maybe you have a family account and you have a child that's trying to download an app or purchase something, it should typically prompt you for that. Prior to this update, sometimes it wouldn't prompt you properly. That should be fixed and work as intended. They've also fixed an issue where Finder would sometimes not work with voiceover. That should be resolved in this update. Now, additionally, there are a ton of security updates. So let's go to Apple's security website and you can see the website here has different things listed, such as the studio display firmware update. Now Apple did update studio display and you can see that here. So they did update it. If we click here, I installed it already. It was 644 megabytes and it doesn't say what it actually fixes, but it has been updated with apparent security fixes. So you can see those here for the security display where an app may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges and they fixed it. However, there's a lot of updates specific to not only the recent updates today, but also macOS Ventura, macOS Monterey and Big Sur. If we go into macOS Ventura 13.3, you can see there's everything from AMD to we have a lot of different ones here with display, FaceTime, iCloud, identity service. We'll keep going here, launch services, network extension, podcasts, and much more. So this is a very important update to install just for security updates. Also, if you have a Mac studio display, make sure you update that as well. It will prompt you when you check for an update. As far as the next updates, well, I would expect Mac OS 13.4 beta one, probably later this week. It could be as soon as tomorrow or possibly later this week. However, what I'm most excited for is WWDC in June. Typically the first full week of June, we have the worldwide developer conference where we'll see Mac OS 14, iOS 17, watch OS 10, and maybe that mixed reality headset with reality OS. So those are the things I'm looking forward to most. As far as the overall performance, I haven't noticed any differences running this version. It seems the same for me on different Macs that I've been using it on, whether that's loading settings or Final Cut Pro or something else. Battery life, I don't use these off the battery very much. I usually keep them plugged into the studio display if it's a laptop, unless I'm on the go. But typically, it's pretty good. My capacity after over a year is 97% and I leave optimized battery charging turned on. So I let it manage itself. I'm not too concerned about that. It seems to manage itself. And I have edited a few videos using this off of the charger and it's easily getting me through a couple videos before I have to put it on a charger. So it's maintaining the good battery life I expect. And so that's everything in Mac OS 13.3. There's not a whole lot of other features I would expect until Mac OS 14, but let me know if you've found anything else I didn't mention in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.